Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning welcome to the very last lecture of this course and this is something that has uh, been long in the pipeline parallel cinema cinema from india i have been talking about uh, this topic for quite a while and uh, whatever we have been talking about we have been talking about so much of international cinema french european um, uh, particularly i'm talking about eastern european countries we, we have been talking about cinema from hungary and poland we have also talked about uh, cinema from sweden and uh, um greece so uh, um al and also not to forget italian neorealism and all this has been leading to this uh the very last session that we are going to do today that is parallel cinema from india i am basically going to focus only on the art house cinema and uh, which is so important to understand because uh Indian cinema is basically associated with song and dance rituals with uh, melodrama all of you are aware of this we have been talking about these things for quite a while now parallel cinema was a, a a product or a result or a consequence of uh, exposure to international cinema and i am talking about international art house cinema from various parts of europe particularly so french new wave italian neorealism neorealism swedish art house cinema hungarian cinema uh, most of which was uh, uh, cinema of uh, um, you know, rooted let's say in uh, socio political conditions of those countries and all, not to forget of course soviet realism uh, the something that we have already talked about earlier in one of our previous classes before we venture into uh, the entire upsurge of uh, parallel cinema new wave indian cinema let me also give you introduction to some uh, uh, of the films that uh, happened even before that the entire new wave cinema movement uh, that was late 60s early 70s now uh, this is uh, just to draw your attention to the fact that uh, cinema of social consciousness has al always been there in india we talked about jagte raho and boot polish when we were discussing um history of hindi films we also talked about bimal roy's classics bin uh, do bigha zameen sujata and bandini which uh, were also not so mainstream films i mean if you compare those films to uh, what you witnessed in the 70s except that those films had very established stars uh, more or less uh, those films are also extremely grounded in uh, social realities of india so uh, this is what we have to Uh, be very careful about i mean we have also talked about films such as chetan anand's neecha nagar which is about the binary between the haves and the have nots and neecha nagar is uh, uh, very symbolically it means the lower city now uh, before all that we also had duniya na mane by the great filmmaker v shantaram whose film also i have referred to earlier particularly dr kotnis ki amar kahani and uh, झनक झनक पायल बाजे एंड ऑल्सो दो आँखें बारह हाथ सो अगेन वी शांता राम दुनिया ना माने विच इज़ अ नाइनटीन थर्टी सेवन फिल्म इज़ अ फैमिलिस्ट फिल्म मच अहेड ऑफ इट्स टाइम्स विच इज़ अ स्टोरी ऑफ अ यंग गर्ल निर्मला फोर्स इन टू अ मैरिज टू अ विडोअर नाउ हर वे ऑफ रेबेलिंग अगेंस्ट द अरेंजमेंट इज टू रिफ्यूज टू कॉन्जुमेट द मैरिज द फिल्म वॉज बेस्ड ऑन अ मराठी नॉवल एंड इज memorable for its social realism along with the psychological depths given to the characters so uh, this was one film and another uh, 
वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फिल्म अपार्ट फ्रॉम जागते रहो बूथ पॉलिश दो बीघा जमीन इज ऑल्सो तीसरी कसम अगेन इट स्टार्ड मेन स्ट्रीम एक्टर्स सच एज राज कपूर एंड वहीदा रहमान इट वॉज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द लिरिसिस शैलेंद्र एंड डायरेक्टेड बाय बासु भट्टाचार्य दिस इज बेस्ड ऑन द स्टोरी बाय फनीश्वर नाथ रेनू अ रिनाउंड हिंदी लिटरेरी ऑथर द नेम ऑफ द स्टोरी वॉज मारे गए गुलफाम एंड द फिल्म रिवॉल्व अराउंड राज कपूर हु प्लेज बिहारी बुलक कार ड्राइवर एंड हिज लव फॉर अ नॉच गर्ल सो द मूवी वन द प्रेसिडेंट्स गोल्ड मेडल फॉर बेस्ट फिल्म हियर इज अ सीक्वेंस फ्रॉम तीसरी कस from here onwards um, i will be focusing on the parallel cinema of the late 60s early 70s so the entire movement which reached its pinnacle in the 70s now what is parallel cinema internationally it is also known as the art house of beat kind of cinema it existed alongside more popular and mainstream indian cinema and was not so commercial in nature i mean the focus was definitely not on mindless entertainment it was not just song and dance although many of these films had uh, their own uh, repertory of actors and also music directors uh, for example van raj bhatia and hans raj bhel so all these movies were they uh, employed the tropes but they changed the cinematic grammar and idiom of cinema the way indian cinema was told of course it all goes back to the great satyajit ray uh, but again uh, uh, ray was in uh, in the 50s and his pathir panchali and now we are already in the 60s but all these uh, experimental filmmakers they look towards ray as their uh, you know more uh, immediate for their own uh, immediate influence now um, it is also noteworthy to remember uh, noteworthy that uh, the exponents of parallel cinema looked towards european art house cinema rather than the big budget hollywood productions a driving force behind the growth of the so called parallel cinema in india was the establishment of nfdc which is national film development corporation of india this was an institution launched with an intention to create um, and also encourage quality indian cinema in all languages initially it was named uh, film finance corporation that is ffc but later uh, the nomenclature changed to nfdc after a few Uh, infrastructural changes it was nfdc's vision to support evolving ideas that may not be commercial viable to take topics and themes such as which are very relevant to the indian context but which wouldn't find um, a great market outside uh, among the mainstream producers so nfdc decided to uh, distribute uh, sorry uh, produce and finance these films So since its establishment, NFDC has supported and financed um, hundreds of films in more than 20 Indian languages. Uh, most important films, and they are some of the best films that India has ever produced. They are such as Messi Sahab, Making of Mahatma, Salam Bombay, Mirch Masala, Rodali, and Train to Pakistan. now soon after its inception ffc took charge of the so called non commercial cinema and amongst many others one of the earlier uh, film uh, makers who got benefited from this institution was brinal sen through his first film titled hovan shom which is a, a 1969 film uh, brinal sen introduced a new kind of indian cinema this was followed by the great mani call who directed a film called uski roti in 
Now, most of these films went on to receive national recognition as well as international awards. Uh, we must also remember that it was NFDC's co-produced Gandhi that got eight Oscars in the year 1983. Now, we come to um, two great directors. I will also be talking about Mirnal Sen, but uh, let me also uh, let me begin with Manikal and Kumar Shahani's cinema. They are the foremost names that come to mind. They are renowned, they are discussed, they are, um, they, uh, are, they inspire a lot of academic discussion. Unfortunately, the films are not so easily available and accessible to us, even in DVD format. Now, Manikal has always been interested in creating films that are modern in their aesthetics. Uski Roti is a 1970 film by Manikal based on a story by the same name by Mohan Rakesh. It is considered a landmark in the history of new wave cinema in India. Uh, in Manikal's own words, the film is about waiting, it is deliberately slow. Because you see, many of these early art house filmmakers were um, accused of making the so called uh, dreadfully slow and non entertaining films. It, um, these allegations came because um, this, this kind of cinema was just not familiar um, to the Indian audience unless and until they were exposed to world cinema. Uh, by world cinema, I mean ma films by masters such as uh, Fellini or uh, Bergman or even let us say. Uh, the Greek masters or the Hungarian masters. Okay. So, um, also we have done Robert Bresson, the French filmmaker. So, unless and until you are familiar with that level of international cinema, it is very difficult to uh, appreciate films which are set in most of these films was based in rural settings. They do, did not have song and dance rituals. They, they had very um, non-glamorous uh, unknown actors in the leading roles. So, these things just did not appeal to uh, the Indian audience. Now, is, Uski Roti is the story of a, a woman called Ballo, whose life revolves around her irritable and indifferent husband. He is a truck driver. Um, she walks for miles every day to get food for her husband and uh, she waits for him as he drives past the village. Um, the film is to Hindi cinema what uh, Pathir Panchali was uh, basically to the Bengali audience or even Meghida Katara by Rituparno Ghosh. So, these two classics of Bengali cinema and Manikal's work can only be compared to those masters. So, Call takes an ultra realistic approach and uh, the film is much in the Bressonian way of filmmaking with uh, lot of attention paid to visual appeal and also he takes a minimalistic approach. This is something that we have been talking about when we discuss Bresso. He also relies on silence and also plenty of emphasis on uh, body parts such as face, eyes and most notably hands again like Bresso. Mrinal Sen's Bhuvan show um, is again uh, a great piece of filmmaking. Bhuvan show as played by um, the actor and theater exponent Uthpal Dutt. So, he plays the title character who is an upright and disciplinarian Bengali officer in the railways in the 1940s. He is a lonely widower. In his 50s, um, he has we are told that he has even dismissed his son from his job when he went on a leave without permission. Now, his subordinates dread him and curse him behind his back, but Bhuvan Shom is definitely not interested or he does not bother about all this. However, 25 years down the line, Bhuvan Shom starts getting bored of his monotonous life. He seeks escape in a holiday and sets off on a bird hunting trip to a village in Gujarat. His new world consists of a simple village folks a bullet cart drive along uh, muddy tracks, wild animals and also he comes in touch with a simple village girl Gauri. 
the movie won the national award for the best film best director and also best actor for utpalwar here is a scene from bhuvan show amrinal says uh, another extremely important film is akeler sandhyane uh, this is uh, this movie literally means in search of famine and in this film sand takes film making as the subject the story is that of a film crew coming to a village to reconstruct the man made bengal famine of 1943 so it's a film about film now kumar sahani's tarang it tells the tale of an internally fragmented family of industrialists and the equally divided body of workers at his factory the link between them being the uh, uh, you know the ambitious wife of a dead worker here it's played by smita patel who begins an affair with the manager of the pack, uh, factory that is uh, uh, amol palekar the film had a strong marxist ideology and uh, shahani examines the class struggles on multiple fronts in the writing that nearly or uh, very clearly recites the labor theory of value and also uh, various voices which we hear for power okay and this is very important to understand that the film is steeped in marxist dialectics tarang is a film within a film again and uh, we are regularly shown that patel and uh, amol palekar they are famous actors who are playing these characters shahani's maya darpan is also set in a small town at a time following the nation's independence in 1947 it is a film about transition and transformation his film char adhyay is based on ravindranath tagore's short story and the director synthesizes the elements of painting theater music and dance in the film the film uh, deals with the themes of love pain and betrayal another uh, important film of this period is ms satyus garam hawa Uh, which is also balra sahani's last work the story focuses on the tragedy of the partition and its aftermath this we have to remember that um, the tragedy of the partition was not dealt with for a long time on screen so um, it was just hinted to, um, at in some films but this was one film that took the entire subject head on uh, Balra Sahani plays a character called Salim Mirza an aging Muslim shoe manufacturer and effectively portrays the crisis of the Muslim community forced to choose between India and Pakistan he refuses to join the hordes of dispossessed refugees on either side of the border the film is full of despair mirza has to face constant communal tension frenzy he uh, suffers financial drawbacks and setbacks too and then uh, finally uh, he loses all hopes when uh, his daughter slashes her wrist after being abandoned by her fiance mirza decides to leave the country however the end uh, is uh, quite optimistic when mirza's son and here we find um, farooq sheik that was his that was his first film um and uh, while on route to the railway station the family comes across uh, a secular communist rally and um, uh, mirza's son decides to join this and uh, the family eventually um, changes its mind about leaving the motherland so um now i come to one of the greatest filmmakers of uh, the indian uh, parallel cinema new wave indian cinema and particularly who has made films in several languages but primarily in, primarily in hindi that is sham benegal his films belong to the peak period of the new wave cinema in india he is a very prolific and quite successful filmmaker 
and he has remained so he has retained his position since his debut feature ankur his concern has more or less remained for the weaker section of society the oppressive feudal customs and also uh, exposition of the patriarchal indian society ankur was his first film 1974 which was made with a budget of 5 lakh rupees and touches upon the themes of adultery caste and exploitation the film also marked the debut of shabana azmi here is a scene from ankur banigal's nishant is uh, one of the grittiest films ever made uh, it had an ensemble cast of the best of actors from parallel cinema uh, the heart of the film is sushila uh, shabana azmi's character who is abducted by the local landlords this even serves as a catalyst for awareness and causing um, and causes an uprising among the oppressed villages in the revolutionary climax in the revolutionary climax the villagers invade the landlord's mansion and kill the entire family only one brother manages to escape with sushila uh, uh, and we are also told that sushila and that brother are now emotionally um, bound together so the crowd chases them through the rocks and both of them are finally killed the film was written by vijay tendulkar and it won acclaim at international film festivals such as cannes and berlin benegal's bhumika which is a 1977 film is based on marathi actress hansa watkar and had superlative performances by smita patil and amol palekar the uh, the film deals with the story of an actress desperately searching for happiness in the world of entertainment three great minds from the theater and cinema had worked on the film girish karnad vijay tendulkar and satyadev dube benegal sets the film in the 30s and the 40s and shoots all the flashback scenes in black and white and the rest in color benegal tried to provide the mass history of that period along with technical advancements in the film industry Manthan written by Vijay Tendulkar has the distinction of being financed by thousands of farmers mill cooperatives in Gujarat with contribution of 2 rupees each as well as by the National Dairy Development Board Manthan was the third part in a trilogy of films dealing with rural oppression and it is a film which framed Benegal as a, a, a very fiercely political voice in Indian cinema it is focused on the efforts of uh, see we have to remember that it is a uh, uh, based on true events and focuses on the efforts of uh, <coughs> urban liberals uh, and as uh, the role is played by girish karnad and his men who come to the village to help rural farmers establish a mill cooperative the film was inspired by the true story of the white revolution the world's biggest dairy development program that took place in india during the 1970s at first the villagers are suspicious of the city folk and reluctant to join the cooperative the villagers are under the influence of a greedy dairy distributor who exploits uh, people particularly the dalits and pays them pittance for their milk junoon is a, a shashi kapoor produced film and directed by sham benegal the film focuses on you know it's set against that backdrop of the first indian mutiny of 1857 we have jennifer candle shashi kapoor's wife and she plays the role of an anglo indian mariam labadur her husband is murdered by indian sepoys in a church mariam and her young daughter ruth as played by nafisa ali they find shelter in the house of a pathan javed khan that is shashi kapoor Uh, Javed is smitten by young Ruth although he is already married to um, he is already a married man and his wife is played by Shabana Azmi Mariam tries to avert the situation by promising Ruth to Javed on one condition if the British lose Delhi in the mutiny the film was produced by Shashi Kapoor um, and his film wala 
company uh, which was Shashi Kapoor's commitment to promote good cinema. It was based on a novella, A Flight of Pigeons by Ruskin Bond. Here is a scene from Junoon. Benegal and Shashi Kapoor came together again in Kalyug. Kalyug is set in, a con, uh, in contemporary times and uh, Benegal co-wrote it with Girish Karnad. It is a reinterpretation of the epic Mahabharata and is set against the urban and industrialized backdrop in Bombay. The film is narrated like a thriller, mapping business intrigues and family politics between two warring families, two warring business families. The epic allusions provide a point of reference for the extent of greed, corruption and ruthlessness among the elite business families in India. The film was um, generally reviewed quite favorably, yet there were detractors who criticized Benegal for losing his way among the commercial filmmakers and also com compromising, uh, particularly by um, having people, you know, casting stars such as Raj Babbar and Rekha. Here is a scene from Kalyug. Trikal is a nostalgic family drama situated in times when Goa was under the Portuguese rule. We are introduced to a number of quirky characters in the opening of the film. The film was a period piece where plenty of attention is paid to sets, locations and costume of that period. Trikal is in Banigal's ode to a slice of India's past. Here is a scene from, the, from Trikal, his 1985 film. Banigal's other works include Mandi, Arohan, Susman, Suraj Ka Satwa Ghoda, Mammo, Sardari Begum, Zubeda, The Making of Mahatma, Well Done Abba. Uh, as I told you already, he has been very prolific and is practically impossible to discuss his entire over. But uh, a great filmmaker whose cinema needs um, greater attention. Now, I um, will move on to another uh, uh, contemporary great filmmaker that is Aparna Sen and her 36 Chaurangi Lane. This is an English language film which was produced by Shashi Kapoor starring Jennifer Kapoor or Jennifer Candle and it is an elegiac portrayal of old age isolation and courage. So, Jennifer Kapoor plays Miss Violet Stoneham who is an Anglo Indian teacher of English in Calcutta. A young Bengali couple brings brief joy in her life and they use her hospitality. However, at the end she is cruelly rejected by the upwardly mobile couple at the end and um, she we see her walking alone on the streets of Calcutta followed by her pet cat and uh, reciting lines from King Lear and we feel, we realize how King Lear, her own life mirrors uh, the predicament of King Lear. The film is a brilliant representation of the city of Calcutta in transition. Coming to the 80s, Ardh Satya is uh, at the center of the parallel cinema. See, the entire movement um, just uh, was on the wane by the mid 80s, but still there are wonderful films and I would like to focus on those films. So, Ardha Satya is at the center of the great films of the 80s. It is a cop drama directed by Govind Nehalani uh, and it was uh, scripted by Vijay Tendulkar. The film is based on a young police inspector and his battle with corruption. The film essentially captures the angst of the common man through the experience of an honest cop. Here is a scene from Ardha Satya. Kundan Shah's 1983 satirical film Jane Bi Do Yaro deals with corruption, bureaucracy and betrayal in a comic and satirical tone. Two down and out photographers Vinod Mishra, sorry Vinod Chopra and Sudhir Mishra and here this is a 
Kundan Shah's uh, you know play on the two um, filmmakers, famous filmmakers who are now famous but at, uh, not so famous during that time, during the um, early 80s. So, uh, these two roles are played by Nasiruddin Shah and Ravi Baswani. They are hired by a manipulative uh, newspaper editor to spy on a builder and his dealings. A murder is committed and leads to a roller coaster ride. The film is remarkable for combining two genres, satire and slapstick. So, other notable films of uh, uh, the new wave cinema and those of you who are interested in this category and I am giving you a list of the must watch films that uh, 27 Down, Chakra, Akrosh, Mirch Masala, Sparsh, Jashme Baddur and Katha. Here is a bibliography of uh, that you may use for your reading. Encyclopedia of Indian Cinema by Paul Wilman and Ashish Raja Dhyaksh and uh, Sangeeta Dattas Shyam Beningen. So, with this we come to the end of this course. Thank you so much.